Okay. <laughs> I know that when I sit back properly, you can't really see my head, but I've set it up like this so that you can kind of see more of, more of the good stuff. Like who wants to be watching me when there are plants to be seen, right? Anyway, <laughs> this video is the second part of my um, recent Equigenera, I say recent, today's Equigenera import. Um, I would recommend you watch me unbox them first and then come back to this video if you haven't already seen that one because in this one I am unwrapping the roots and kind of acclimating them to their new home with me. So let's get into that. Uh, just in case you haven't seen that video and you're refusing for whatever reason to go and watch it first, here are the plants I got. This is my Anthurium peltigerum. The main reason I placed that order, so I'm very happy to have this one and it looks very good. This is, I mean, there has to be one in every order apparently. This is the Anthurium that I cannot pronounce. I'm not even gonna... <laughs> There's gotta be one plant in every order that you can't pronounce, right? Like, it makes sense. Um, the name's on the screen. This is that Anthurium. This is the Anthurium Sagittatum. The, anth the sun is deciding now's a really good time to set and be out from behind the house. <coughs> um, this is the Anthurium Sagittatum. And then this is my replacement Anthurium nigrolaminum GG, which it is a replacement from the last Equigenera order I did, which you can watch here. And I'll have it linked below in the description as well. So, let's get to it. Let's check on these roots. Let's see who who's strong and who's going to be risking, risking life to be with me. Woo! Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna check that you can actually see. Okay, I've just moved me and the plants back a little bit, so hopefully you can see them a little bit better. If you're not new to my channel, you will know that I will eventually have a nice office space for filming. Um, and I can't wait to have that space. But for now, we're making do with what we've got. Um, so here we are. I am gonna start with the Peltigerum because that is the one that I feel very excited about. So I'm going to put these guys on the floor next to me and let's just get in. Right, where have I put those scissors? Okay. Let me know in the comments if you've ever imported from either Equigenera or elsewhere. I would love to know, like, are you watching this because you're doing research and are planning? on doing an import or have you already done it and you're just curious to see like how orders are coming these days let me know oh we've had some root loss Ooh, quite a bit of root loss but the roots that have gone seem healthy with no rot on them I don't know if you can see, but like this is, they're like solid roots. So I wonder if it got kind of crushed at some point. Hmm. Not great, but there's no rotting roots. And there's some like healthy ones up here too. It's a bit sad, but it, it, like this looks like, I don't know, like somebody bagged it and crushed it or something and snapped some of the roots. I don't think I did that when I un unboxed it. But okay, so that's that one. I haven't got anything to put them in yet. Okay. I'm definitely not the most prepared for this. <laughs> I was normally I do like a hydrogen peroxide treatment but I actually don't have any hydrogen peroxide right now so 
I'll have to place an order for that and do that tomorrow, which you will see. Um, but either way, I'm gonna, it, this plant's gonna need to be hydrated, so into some water it goes. And on to the next one. So let's check out the Anthurium nigrolaminum GG. So, as I said, this is a replacement. My last um, GG I ordered in, which you may have seen in the video, it like it kind of looked okay and just got worse and worse. There was a root <laughs> tied into the knot of the back. <laughs> um, it just got worse and worse. <laughs> As time went on in the video, like initially it looked okay and then it just really didn't look okay. Um, these ones, however, these roots do look okay. I can't see any rot, I don't think. Oh. They look really good. But they feel like a little bit dry. But for now they look good. I should like I don't think you can really tell until it's been like a a little bit of time in water with it hydrating. To be honest. So we'll see because they can look really good, but if they've dried out too much and they're no longer able to absorb um, water, they'll just, they'll rot because they'll be dead. So they look fine for now. There wasn't much root loss there in that one. We will see how they look. We'll see how they look together. You'll see it. But I'm not completely sure how many hours or whether it'll be, I think it might end up being tomorrow. I've got plans this evening, so we'll see whether I can check on them later or if I have to do it tomorrow. Oof, okay, this is a, this is a big root ball. I really wish I knew how to pronounce this plant's name. I feel really bad. Like you're in my collection, I should know your name. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research. I want like choir at the top of this, because of choir. Or husk. That is a pretty hefty root system, that one snapped. again same 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 story i'm not going to know how much damage there is until they've kind of rehydrated i know some people would just chop all these off and just start again um which i'm not against doing at all but i like if there is the potential for some healthy roots to come out of these or to still be in these then i think i'd rather just try and keep them just to save the plant a bit of energy um but it does look a pretty decent, a pretty decent um, plant. There is an inflow in there. And what looks like could be a new leaf. Let me see if I can get close enough to show you. So this here is an inflow. And then in this caterpillar here, that little, you can't really see. <laughs> this point here, looks like it's gonna be a new leaf. What will happen with those two, now that it's obviously gone through quite a stressful uh, process, I don't know, it might just hit pools for a little bit, but we will see. That's not gonna fit in that jug. I'm really not an organized person at all. This guy's getting a wine glass. 
I don't even know it's going to fit in the wine glass. <laughs> oh my god. Come on, get in there, you little noodles. You little noodles, you. <laughs> Wasn't that attractive? <laughs> There's that one. <laughs> And then the last one is the Anthurium Sagittatum, which has like the greenest roots, which not all Anthurium roots are green, but it's a very good sign that they are still green. Ooh. Oh my gosh, they're huge. This is a seedling, apparently. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> this is absolutely not a seedling. Seedlings don't have this many roots. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. There's definitely, like some of these are definitely gonna die like, oh, like those ones there. <laughs> There's like loads of little kind of I guess probably what you consider a secondary root. So like a primary root is this one and then the secondary roots are, sorry if you can't see, primary root is this long one and then the secondary roots are the ones that are coming off of it. And then you get ones that come off of those and they're tertiary roots and I don't know how, how far along all the different names go for the different amounts of roots, but there's definitely quite a few of the primary roots that are dead in this one which is absolutely fine there's loads of primary roots left but untangling the dead oh, I mean it's not absolutely necessary at the moment oh my god look how <laughs> so long you're not even able to like see it properly I'm gonna insert like a clip of it so that you can see how long these are this is insane wow and they like even though some of them are green and they look great they definitely feel quite dry like i don't know how how many of these are going to make it i just i'm i'm in love with these petioles they're amazing all attached in there. She said snapping off some roots. Christ, I can't believe they've considered this a seedling. It's so far from what a seedling is. But I'm not complaining. <laughs> I am absolutely not complaining. things come off that's okay we've still got those to work but what am i gonna put this in <laughs> i mean use what you've got right get in there hydrate oh god is it gonna make and there's a flow. Ooh. <laughs> Which one's more ridiculous? That one or the wine glass? <laughs> okay. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just tidy this up, put it all in the bin, and I'm gonna I think I'm gonna clean the leaves today, but as I said I do need to order I don't know if you can see me. I do need to order some hydrogen peroxide, which I will do. 
because um, I mean I need it for other things as well but I think it will be helpful to have these guys and if I order it now from good old Amazon it might come tomorrow <laughs> I might do that um, and I'm gonna let them soak hydrate I'll clean the leaves chances are I'm not gonna be able to do anything else with them tonight so I'm probably gonna be leaving them sitting in water overnight which is fine it's okay um, let's get to it Okay, so to clean the leaves, I'm going to be using SB Plant Invigorator and Bug Killer. I'm going to be spraying it on with my Tovia spray. There is just under 75 mils in there, which means I need to put 7.5 mils in. I've already shaken this, it does say to shake it. That's five. And there is a marking for 2.5 as well. And do you know what? I'm not going to, because it's just under, it's literally just under two, uh, 75 mil, so I'm not going to put the whole 2.5 in. Right, well, it's not there to wash. start with the one closest to me which is the Sagittatum. This one looks really okay. I haven't seen anything I'm concerned about on it. It is just kind of cleaning up a little bit and I guess just a bit of security. Um, I'm going to spray the cloth just because this is wonderful and it has a really wide fine mist spray but last time everything got soaked. So I'm just going to Spray it onto the cloth instead. This is just a standard microfiber cloth. Nothing too fancy. I'm just gonna clean as I go and make sure to clean both the front and the back. And what I will probably do, and I probably won't do it on camera is I will, um, once I've done kind of like the individual leaf kind of rubbing and inspection, I will put these into the bathtub and kind of drench them in this stuff. Just to make sure that it's all really like covered. But I, like I said, don't want to do that here because it just gets that, it gets everywhere. <laughs> Like everything gets soaked. I need to keep an eye on the time because I could definitely get like, just completely lose track of time. I'm going out this evening and I'm a bit nervous about it. I'm, I'm actually going out and doing like a bit of a, I don't know, like a plant talk and kind of a bit of a plant clinic for my boss and her family. Um, I don't really know what to expect. I'm really looking forward to it, but like I said, I don't want to lose track of time dealing with my plants, but it is, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to have a really lovely planty evening talking to other people about their plans.
Oh, some of these are really hard to get to, so I definitely will be drenching this one much more thoroughly in the shower. And the Nigro Laminin GG and the Pelted Gerum. Now it was one of these that I haven't seen any moving pests. It was this one, the Pelted Gerum. It's hard to tell that it's just like, I'll come up close. It's hard to tell if it's scarring or, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but that's just some little like, you see this bump here? There's like a few of them on this leaf and I know that is what scale can look like, but it, I mean, I know it's really hard to tell with scale that they don't tend to move. That's the nature of a scale. But do you know, I reckon it is scarring because it doesn't even budge when I scrape it. And, I'm, and I have had scale before and you can kind of scrape, scratch it off. So, no pests on the peltigerum. And I haven't seen anything worrying on the Nigra laminum either. But like I said, better to be safe than sorry. And I should say the SB Plant Invigorator and Bug Killer is, um, well, it says it's an environmentally friendly pesticide and growth stimulant. And it controls whitefly, aphids, spider mites, mealy, bugs, scale, and mildew. Um, so there's no need for a harvest interval, it's non-toxic, it's a physical mode of action and a foliar feed for strong growth as well. So that's all good and dandy. But I suppose, you know, if there is anything on here that's foreign to the UK, it might not be treatable with SP plant invigorator, but We'll give it a little spray anyway and hope for the best. <laughs> okay, that's that bit done. Now I'm gonna go put them in the bath and spray them down. And then I will find them somewhere to hang out for the night. Hey, so it's the next day and there's quite literally nowhere for me to stand without a glare on my glasses. So I am sorry about that. Um, the plants have been sat in water overnight. I'm gonna show you where I've had them set up now. So this is the setup I've had. This lid has been like half on to kind of allow a bit of humidity to be trapped in there, but also some airflow. And they all look pretty good i think i'm gonna set up the camera and we will pop them into their semi-permanent substrates hey gang so we are back today as i said these plants have been soaking overnight um in that little kind of tupperware contraption that i created um i'm gonna pop them all up and i'm I've had like a really, really quick kind of look at their roots. And I'm actually pretty impressed with how they're looking at the moment. I was kind of expecting to see lots of them looking like they were rotting, but they don't look too bad, honestly. So I'm gonna be putting them into their like semi-permanent substrate. And when I say semi-permanent, it's because I, the substrate that I'm gonna put them into is this one here. And it's got, lots of different things in it it's got like a little bit of houseplant soil it's got some coco coir lecker a dead leaf apparently um it's got some moss in there some hummus some zeolite uh what else is in there right 
it might be a, a bit of semi-hydro mix. Um, so this is kind of like a, I describe it as like a dirty semi-hydro mix. <laughs> And the aim will be to get them into like full semi-hydro. So this is like an in-between because I think looking at the roots, it looks like they've been in quite a chunky kind of cocoa choir based mix prior to being shipped over here. So I want to put them back into something that is hopefully a little bit similar to what they were in. And then maybe in like a month or something, move them. I say that, but it'll probably be next spring. <laughs> move them into, the, into a semi-hydro mix. So that is what I'm going to do today. I'm running a bit low on um, vessels. So the two smaller ones, these two here are gonna have their own. And then the bigger ones have got like a big storage organizer <laughs> to go into, um, but I'll get to that. So let's just get to it. I know the Peltigerum had the worst roots. Well, I suppose the least. So I'm gonna put it into this tiny little vessel here it's got a layer of leca at the bottom for a water reservoir that one's gonna snap and break off but the rest of these look okay i am sad that it had some of those break off in transit um but the rest look okay i'm gonna i hope you can see that there's some of like old caterpillars here so I'm just going to take those off. Now that they've been soaking, they'll come off a little bit easier. Um, I didn't order the hydrogen peroxide yesterday, so we're just going to have to do without it and I'll keep an eye on them. Um, I only really use the hydrogen peroxide for imports to treat the rot in the roots, but as these don't look too bad, I'm not too worried about it, so I'm just going to go ahead and carry on without that stage in the acclimation process like I would normally do. Um, I forgot to order it because I, as I said in, well, yesterday, but earlier in the video, I was going out and I'm going to put in like a couple of little clips. I, I think they're good enough to put in. Um, basically, I went out, um, my one of my bosses asked me to kind of do like a bit of a house plant consultation at her mum's place with some of her mum's friends and some of the other female family members in the family and I had a blast. <laughs> I had a really good time. So kind of like answered some questions, helped with some boily plants. Um, yeah, it was good. Let's just get to repotting. It's quite a all plants and this is quite a small <laughs> vessel so it I'll probably need to support it somehow so it doesn't kind of topple out a lot but I'll see what see what I can do get it in here to begin with oh I'll water it I was when I was making this um kind of substrate mix I was thinking I might sprinkle in some of the great white mycorrhizal just to have it ready in there but I've I forgot to do that bit and I've started this now so I'll just water it in like I normally do but the the great white will help with I guess sh just like shock and hopefully it'll help it to produce some more roots and it might even help keep the growth point on this one if you remember I showed you it have a new leaf come in here so it might be able to help that it doesn't it's not like a miracle thing <laughs> but it has done some pretty miraculous things from the plants so <laughs> i will definitely be watering it in right that's that one done ah it's so cute <laughs> i'm so happy to have this plant in my collection i can't wait to get it into the cabinet i also can't wait to um, rearrange my cabinet like I want my cabinet to mostly be my anthurium so there'll be a couple that don't fit in there like my clown nervium up here isn't too big of a pot um, and I think my pelted no that's my pelted my 
Palo de Florum will stay on the shelves because they're such long strappy leaves. I think it just won't work in there. Um, the Nigra Lamin and Gigi I'm going to put in here. But yeah, I'm, I'm building up to reorganising my plant shelves and cabinet and I will film it, of course. But these things, it feels like a really big task. So it takes me a little while to imagine what it could look like, kind of plan it in my head um, and then actually do, do the thing. Just gonna check to see if any of them have rotted. I'm really impressed with this, with this import so far. There was a, I didn't actually talk about it, I don't think, in the unboxing video. There was a lot of issue with this import. So I ordered it in August, like I said in that video, and it's now November. But Equigenera were having trouble with their kind of like importing documents. They, so the UK changed, I don't know, changed something about getting plants into the country. And basically Equigenera was, I think they were struggling to get all the correct paper all finalized and everything. So there was a real delay in getting the plants over. And I, I know some people miss the cut off. So Equigenera, you, they only ship to the UK once a month. So if you order a bit too late into a month, so say I ordered now, it's the 19th of November. If I ordered now, I wouldn't get my plants in December. I'd get them in January, most likely. Um, you have to early, really early on. You have, to, you have to order really early on in the month to get it in the next month's shipment. I hope that makes sense. Um, Where was I going with that? I don't know where I was going with that story. <laughs> I've lost my trail of thought. Um, so they only ship once to the UK each month. If you order too late in the month, you're not gonna get it the next month. It'll come in the next month's transaction. Um, still don't know where I was going with it, but they were they were struggling with getting this new import documents or whatever it was. Oh, was I, was I gonna? I know somebody ordered in July and they were, they're only just getting their plants, which is a really long time to wait. Like August to November is a long time, but I feel like July just is that little bit, um, just that little bit longer. really enjoyed last night it was really fun to talk to people in person about plants like I know the plant community is online and it's it's amazing but it was really nice to talk to people my grill and then Gigi finished so my boss's mum who's the place we went to it like she lives in this big building and there are plants everywhere and they're all hers and she takes care of them and it was just it was lovely to talk to her about her plants and how she, you know, she was loving separating them and creating more plants and she likes to sell them so they're like evenly spread out and equal and oh, it was just, it was, it was a lovely evening. Um, and at one point I did really want to, I think last year I was really trying to push doing house plant consultations and then my um, mental health just I just needed to look after myself for a little bit and that was just one thing too many so I stopped trying to do that but last night's made me feel like this is too big last night made me feel like it is something I'd love to do I don't know maybe one day maybe one day um this is the vessel I picked out for the two bigger plants now I've got my Philander Glorious and potted in one of these and I actually bought this to be the extension for when it's kind of crawled because it's a crawler crawled along but for now it's not it's not going to be ready for that anytime soon so for now i was hoping i could fit this one and this one in there 
It's just whether their root systems will allow it. Let's give it a go. I'm going to start with the this one, the Anthurium Sajid pattern. Those roots are amazing. Honestly, these roots are just, they're insane. They're still so healthy. Like, I don't know if you can, can you see the green in them? Of course, there's a lot of white up here and these ones probably will die off. Um, but these green ones here, I reckon they're here to stay. Which is amazing, I'm so happy. This plant's also got it's got several pups. Again, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, but there's, you see this little point here and this one here, and there's one down there. They're pups. So whether they'll ever um, grow and turn into plants, but I don't know. It's, it's amazing that they're there. It's these roots that are like really long that make me feel like I'm not gonna be able to I'm not going to be able to pop these together like this. Okay. I haven't got any vessels. I have got... in my plant storage. I have this pasta jar that I bought for £2.50. So I could put this one in. Wow. Those roots though. It's just incredible. Like what, how, what were they rooting this in? Because, like, it looks like a plant. Like, it's not, like, it's not a cutting or there's no extra stump. It's not grown off or something. Like, these roots are for this plant, yet the plant doesn't quite, <laughs> like, the plant doesn't quite match the root system, if you know what I mean. Like, it's a bit smaller than what I'd expect. running low on substrate. There's that one. Like a little bit of moss just over that root there to try and not let it dry out. Cute. That's that one there. Um, I'm gonna need some more substrate for that one and I need a vessel, don't I? Okay, I've just added some of the uh, Soil Ninja Core Semi Hydro. As per usual, I underestimated how much substrate I'd need. And I found this vessel to put the Anthurium Villarneorum. You know the one. I don't know the name <laughs> In. Okay. I still think we're going to struggle to fit it in there, to be honest. Because this root system is also pretty amazing. So there's some, like... dry caterpillar bits which I'm going to try and get out again. Again not necessarily like it's not a necessity it doesn't have to be done. I do like to try and get them off if I can. wonder how how the new leaf is feeling. Probably quite stressed. 
but hopefully the um, Great Wet Myco might help. Oh, you know I said about the inflow, it's actually like, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, I hope it focuses, but here it's, it's almost out, like normally inflows come out really high, but and it doesn't look like it's receptive. I'm not about to <laughs> try and pollinate. Like I've got some anthurium pollen in the freezer, but I'm not about to pollinate an anthurium that's literally just been imported because um, flowering is quite, is quite a stressful thing for an anthurium. Like for them to produce berries, it takes a lot, a lot of energy and often they can, like the mother plant can deteriorate for a period of time after because it's so stressful, which, you know, is understandable. So if, if the plant's already stressed, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. Unless I didn't really care about it, then I might, but I do care about the plant. <laughs> Just got it. Just arrived in my collection. That's definitely not perfect. But I think it will do for now. I think. Okay. And now I've got loads of substrate left over. <laughs> never judge it right. Ever. Like ever, ever. I never judge substrate right. I think he's definitely my favorite. And I'm really happy to have an nigrolaminum that looks healthy. So, oh, it's, su it's such a ridiculously big vessel for the size of the plant. I might, when it's a bit more settled in, I might end up trimming the roots, which like normally I w don't recommend trimming roots unless like if I was gonna take a big plant and chop it down, and like the last bit of like the, the mother, the main plant was quite small and the root system was huge. I chop it back because that now small plant doesn't need as big a root system. But I just don't understand why this quite small plant has such a big root system. Like, I feel like this looks ridiculous. But there's those three. I'm gonna make some myco water. Okay, so this is great white myco rhizeal inoculum. I have no idea if I'm saying that right. <laughs> Um, but it's beneficial bacteria and trichoderma. Um, it says on it, killer roots for killer plants. Great white, killer sharp. Um, it's, like it says on it, to lightly dust the soil and place plant directly on top. So I have done that before, like kind of put a sprinkling of it and then put the plant in and plant around it, but you can water it in um, and it says like soil and potted plants there's a hydroponic application as well um, I really didn't measure it out this is my watering can which needs a bit of clean but I literally just tap tapped filled it up so I'm gonna water it in now my plants and hopefully they will appreciate it I don't know if you can capture on the camera, but I'm just watching the water line fill up. Up to the kind of layer of lecker. Oh, I love my glass watering can, but it's so heavy when it's full up. It's um, quite impractical, to be honest. Not gonna lift up the big one. Important. There's a lot more substrate for this to like filter through. Get a little bit more in there. And then my GG. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them now. Like 
like I do want them to go into the cabinet but the cabinet's not I don't know if it's got room for them and I don't know if I've got it in me to do the reorganizing today um they may just go back into the kind of Tupperware box thing that I had them in before <laughs> Right, I'm gonna film my outro, just in case this is the end of the video. So that's it for this acclimation video. This is obviously just the very beginning of it. These plants will be settling in for weeks, months to come. They um, may or may not like being here. We'll see, I will keep you updated. Please do subscribe so that you are kept updated and you don't miss any of those updates. I will do like an import update video and I will also probably tag in my previous import to that update video too. And yeah, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching my acclimation process and how, I, how I've done it this time around. I'm pretty sure I did it differently to the first time I did it. <laughs> Watch this video up here if you wanna see how I did it the first time around. Um, and I'll see you in my next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. Okay, I've been fiddling around. I've got the plants in there. I thought I'd quickly show you. So not ideal for the Bilara Nuria blah blah blah. Focus. But it's sat just here. <laughs> but like I said, I need to do like a whole reorganization of this whole space. So it will have a better spot in the very near future. The other ones are in here. So the Nigra Laminum GG is up here on this little magnetic shelf. Is that focused? Yeah up here with my anthurium baccarii and then my pelter germ is bang in the middle pride of place and then the sagittatum is just over there so that is it in there for now um as i said it's not gonna it's not gonna be staying quite like that but that is it for now now that I've just shown you inside the cabinet, I think the outro that I filmed doesn't quite make sense, but just ignore that. I'm not gonna film another one, so here's the outro. <laughs>